Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a new Lenovo Chromebook. This is their Yoga C630, and this is a two-in-one, meaning that you can flip it around into display mode like this and have Chrome go into its tablet interface. You can also have it work in tent mode or fold it up and have a ginormous tablet here because this has a 15.6 inch display. And what we're going to be doing is taking a closer look at this Chromebook in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This starts at $599, which I think is pretty reasonable. I believe this is the entry-level model. It has an i3-8130U dual-core processor, which is just fine for the kinds of things you do on a Chromebook. It's very snappy and responsive, and we'll look at its performance in a minute. It has a 15.6-inch 1080p IPS display. It looks very nice. It's got decent viewing angles on it. I believe there is a 4K version available as well, and it's also a touchscreen, of course. The only issue I'm finding with the display is that when you've got uh, blue items on screen, some, such as this little T here in the corner, or perhaps when you jump into the settings menu and you've got these blue bars up on screen, uh, you're going to see a little bit of vertical banding on this uh, LED display. It's something I've seen on a few other devices from Lenovo that come in at around this price point. So just bear that in mind. It may not be a silky smooth image all the time. Just on darker colors, I'm seeing a little bit of vertical banding that's very difficult to uh, show you on screen, but you'll notice it when you're using it. This has 8 gigs of RAM at the entry point and only 64 gigabytes of storage built in. Now, I used to be more forgiving of Chromebook storage given that they did everything in the cloud. Uh, but of course, now with Linux apps and Android apps that you can install on these things, you might need a little bit more local storage. And there are versions of this with uh, larger storage options available. So you may want to do a little bit of shopping if you are a Chromebook power user. It's a very nicely constructed device. It is all metal from top to bottom. It feels really premium. Uh, the weight on this is 4.2 pounds or 1.9 kilograms. Uh, so it's about what you would expect out of a mid-range 15-inch laptop. Uh, and of course, you'll definitely be feeling that weight when you're lugging around the tablet here. It's got a very nice big screen, of course, but unfortunately, there is no active pen support on this model. Uh, Lenovo does make versions of their uh, Windows Yogas that have active pens that are built right into the case. Uh, this one does not yet have that. Uh, to be fair, though, Chrome OS's support of Pen is still kind of early, but it would have been nice to have that as an option at the moment. It's just going to work with whatever third-party uh, pens that might be out there for Chromebooks. And like most Lenovo devices, it has a very comfortable keyboard. It's got the standard Google Chromebook layout on it, of course. It is not backlit, though. Uh, that was one thing that surprised me, given that we typically see those kinds of keyboards on these mid to high range devices here. So that was one thing you won't get here. Uh, but it does have a very nice trackpad that's responsive and uh, really nice to use. So they've done a nice job, once again, on the uh, input devices. You've got a couple of ports worth mentioning. Over here on the left-hand side is a USB Type-C port that they labeled with power, uh, but this is a full service port, so you could hook it up to a dock and get a display output, data in and out, along with power going in. You have a full-size USB 3 port here, and you also have a headphone microphone jack here. On the other side, you have another USB Type-C port that functions the same as the one on the other side does. So you could actually plug your power cord into this side, even though it doesn't say you can. Uh, when you do plug the power cord in here, uh, the charging light will light up on the other side. There's no charging light on this side, but it does, again, work the same. Video output works the, the same out of this as well, and you can drive 4K displays with this too. You have a micro SD card slot here for augmenting some of that limited storage, but you can't do everything off the micro SD card, especially as it relates to Android apps and whatnot. But you can, of course, put some of your larger media files on there if you want. And then you've got a volume rocker here for adjusting the sound, uh, and your power button is there. Now, this is not a fanless device because it is running with one of those higher powered Intel processors. So you will have a fan intake over here and an exhaust here on the back. But to be honest, the fan is usually very, very quiet. 
primarily because Chromebooks don't tend to push the processor for extended periods of time. So as a result, you might hear the fan going occasionally, but it's very, very minimal uh, because it's not running all that fast most of the time. So generally, if you just have it open browsing the web or maybe watching a video or something, uh, you might feel some air coming out the back here, but you're really not going to hear anything. Uh, the speakers on it aren't bad. They're downward firing like many of these Lenovo laptops are. Uh, decent sound out of it, but of course you'll do better if you plug in some headphones or use a Bluetooth headset or something like that. And then if you want to lock it down on a desk, you can uh, just pop in a Kensington lock here to keep it secure so nobody walks away with your Chromebook. And battery life on this one feels pretty good to me. I'm looking at about nine hours or so in my testing, and I think you could probably get a little bit better than that. Uh, if you turn display brightness down and really regulate your usage with it. If you start doing Android apps and Linux things, that might tax the hardware a little bit more and result in lesser battery life. But I think for general Chromebook activities, you should do uh, pretty nicely here. Uh, there is a 4K version that doesn't do as well on battery life, so bear that in mind. But again, this one uh, is pretty darn good for a 15-inch device. And performance on this Chromebook feels pretty good, actually. If you're used to using some of the cheaper Chromebooks running with ARM processors, this is going to feel a lot faster uh, because it is running with a regular Intel laptop processor. So you can see how fast uh, pages render here on screen. A really nice, fast, and snappy experience when you are browsing the web with it. And it's also doing a very nice job with video playback from Netflix and YouTube, for example. Uh, like we always do, we run our 1080p 60 frames per second YouTube test here. Had a few drop frames here and there, which is something we often see with the Chrome browser when you're running high frame rate video. But in this instance, we've been running this for uh, almost two minutes now. And uh, we've had about 10 or 11 drop frames, not something you'll notice here. We just went up to 13 there. So not bad for uh, what you would get out of a Chromebook typically. And I think for media watching, it should do very well. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 164.1, which puts it very close to many other eighth generation Intel devices we've looked at recently. Uh, it even does well against an i5 on the Yoga 73013 we looked at. We got 93 on version 2.0 of that test. So overall, a very capable web browsing device, which is what you want a Chromebook to be. And like most Chromebooks these days, you can install the Google Play Store on the device and grab all of your favorite Android apps. And we've got a Goat Simulator here running. We'll just uh, continue the game here. Uh, the keyboard doesn't always work so great with some of these Android games where it might be in weird positions here. So uh, right now on Goat Simulator, S is moving forward when you would expect maybe W to do that. Uh, but of course, you could always flip it into huge tablet mode and uh, just use your touch display with it. But overall, a very good Android experience on this device, partly because you've got a pretty snappy Intel processor driving everything there. And Google recently added the capability to run Linux applications on Chromebooks, which gives you a huge software library to pull from. So for example, I installed the GIMP here, which is a photo editor that has a lot of features you might find in Photoshop and other more expensive applications, yet it is free and running uh, on my Chromebook here with a full graphical user interface. So these things are no longer glorified web browsers. They are very capable computers. Uh, you can also install Steam because remember, this is running with an Intel processor. Uh, so you should be able to run many of the Linux compatible Intel games from the Steam library. Now at the time I'm recording this video, uh, Google has not yet tied in graphics support into their Linux implementation on Chromebooks, which means that uh, games even like Shovel Knight here that would normally run uh, at 60 frames per second with this processor on Windows are going to be running a little bit slower here, as you'll see uh, when the game loads up. And that's just because they haven't yet tied in the GPU to the mix here. Once they do, I think we'll be seeing better performance. Uh, this will not outclass a Windows computer with the same configuration, even with that GPU support. Uh, but nonetheless, it will greatly expand the amount of software, especially games, uh, that you'll be able to take advantage of here on a Chromebook. And I really feel like this Chrome OS is becoming more and more of a mainline competitor uh, to Windows and Mac OS, especially for consumers. It's done very well on the education side, uh, but now with this Linux support, I think we're going to see a lot more uh, coming down the pike here because certainly uh, companies like Valve who 
are responsible for the Steam Store will want to expand the number of computers they can have games get installed on, and sure enough, you can do that uh, with a Chromebook once they get that GPU support worked out. It is apparently working right now in uh, some bleeding edge betas of Chrome OS, so we'll maybe explore this a bit once that uh, GPU support becomes a little bit more pronounced. So overall, I am pleased with this Chromebook. It's a very solid consumer device. It's not that expensive. It performs very well even at the entry point. And I think these Chrome OS devices will get more and more interesting as that Linux support continues to get improved. I've seen some really nice improvements over the last couple of months with it. And I think once they tie in some of those uh, GPU features, we'll be getting a bit more performance out of these things. And I think Chrome OS is very quickly becoming a real competitor uh, to Windows and Mac OS, and certainly the price is right uh, even for some of these higher powered devices. So lots more to see on Chrome OS in the very near future, I am sure, and we'll have more Chromebooks as more get released throughout the course of this year. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.